Hopefully at this point, you've had a little bit of time to check out all the different ways to program the Arduino. And you should have already gone to arduino.cc and selected the type of operating system you had, download it and install it. Whether it's a Mac or a PC or a Linux machine, it really doesn't matter. They all run this basically the same. So let's take a look at the program and talk about all the buttons and menus. I'm gonna go ahead and launch Arduino. And it starts up pretty quickly. Now, one thing you should know, and this sometimes gets people a little stumbled up, when you actually close a sketch, and this is what we program the Arduino environment in, they call them sketches. These are the programs that we're using. But when I open up Arduino for the first time, I get a blank sketch. If I close that, one of the little quirks about Arduino is you actually quit out of the program. So as long as you have a sketch open, Arduino is running. If you close that last sketch, then it quits. So here we are, blank sketch. Now let's talk about the environment a little bit. So what are all these buttons and menus? Let's take a look at these very quickly. So you can learn about Arduino. There are preferences, believe it or not. There's not too many preferences. You have a location of where your sketches are saved automatically. On a Mac, it's in your user folder under your name, documents, and it creates a folder for you, Arduino. In the past, you kept sketches and libraries separately. Arduino has really come a long way. It's working quite well now. Another nice thing is, believe it or not, there are so many languages. Um, I, attribute, I attribute a lot of that to the fact that it's open source and there's this huge community that just always developing new languages and new libraries and plugins and all this great stuff and they implement them quite well. Verbose output, we can talk about that later. It's a little more technical. It gives you more information about what's happening behind the scenes. Compiler warnings, you can just leave them as none. Display line numbers, that's whether you want, let's see if I can update it in real time right here. If I click OK, you can see it gives you line numbers. They're very helpful. I actually prefer to have them. I just updated mine, so my preferences are a little off. Use an external editor, we're not going to use that. Updates on, check for updates on startup, really nice if you have that click. By default, it is click, clicked. New extensions, it saves. So, so here is .pde. That is the old way of saving a sketch. They were saved as .pde. Now they're saved as a .ino. Um, so that just allows you to convert them easily. Save when verifying or uploading. It automatically saves, very handy. Board manager, we will talk about boards later. That's a whole nother animal. It's actually not that bad, but it's, it's pretty cool because it allows developers when they come up with their own board, again, it's open source, so you can download a lot of schematics and data and information about how you make your own Arduino board. You can have a board file that tells the Arduino IDE what that board is and how to upload and the speed it's running and all those things. And then you can put that out there and easily install it. Makes, makes adding additional Arduino boards very easy. So we can just click OK here. File, pretty much what you think it is, new, open, open recent, sketchbook. This is where you keep all of your programs that you write. So you can see a whole bunch of my sketches that I have in here. Examples, this is the one we're going to be using a lot. This is actually one of my favorite pieces of the Arduino IDE because it gives you basic functioning, working code that's really clean and really easy to understand, well commented, and can get you up and running so fast. So they include all these great examples in here, all the way from basic, just make something blink, to make it fade, to USB, adding keyboards and displays, how to do a bar graph and sensors, and a lot of really great built-in stuff. Don't discount some of those examples. Even though they're simple, you will grab code from them when you wanna use a potentiometer, or add something to your circuit, you, you will find yourself grabbing some of that example code and using it, it's really a great resource. Close, close the file, obviously. Save, save as, renaming it, printing. Pretty straightforward, cut, copy, paste, don't need to go over all that. Um, comment and uncomment, we will show you that a little bit later on. Find and replace is actually pretty handy if you find yourself putting in colons instead of semicolons too often, you can do a find and replace real quick. So sketches, you're verify and compile. So after you write a, a sketch, you can click verify and compile and it will make sure that your code is properly formatted, that it will run and that it will compile and upload to the board. You can upload here, upload using a programmer. So that's using a different programmer that comes in very handy when you're programming different microcontrollers. Um, exporting the compiled binary, very helpful again for programming different kind of chips. 
show your sketch folder. That will actually open up where you're saving all your sketches. Include library. This is another whole topic. Now libraries, what they are is let's say I wanted to add a, an LCD screen to my project. Well, programming an LCD screen with an Arduino is actually not easy from scratch. But with a library, you might have something from Adafruit that's include the Adafruit LCD screen library. You include that library, and now it's almost as simple as you know, print my name, print whatever you want to do. Um, and it handles all the back end. So libraries are unbelievably powerful, and they will become your best friend when programming Arduino because it takes all the difficult things that you really need to be quite well versed in computer programming or electrical engineering to understand, and it makes it super easy so that anyone can implement really amazing sensors or screens or control robots and motors. Really great stuff, and we will go into detail about that. Tools, formatting, so you can format your sketch automatically. Typically what that does is move the indents around so it's easier to read. Archive your sketch, which that takes your sketch and creates a zip file for you so that you can easily email it or post it online. Fix encoding and reload. That'll uh, correct errors in it and reload your sketch. Serial monitor. So what the serial monitor allows you to do is have a window open on your computer and say you had a temperature sensor hooked up to your Arduino. You could convert the information from the temperature sensor into Celsius or Fahrenheit and print it to a serial monitor on your screen. So it allows you to kind of peer into what's happening in the Arduino. Very, very handy tool. Then you have your board, which is the type of board that you have. In my case, I'm using an Arduino Uno. You have the port, which is the port that your Arduino is connected to. Typically, like an Arduino Uno, I use a USB cable. It's a USB A to B. I plug it in and your port should show up. You'll, again, typically see Bluetooth. So I skip that one. Whatever the new port that shows up or typically the last one on the list is the one you'll be using. What's nice about the new Arduinos is it will say something like dev USB modem 1421 and then in parentheses Arduino Genuino Uno. Very nice. In the past, it might have just said 1412 and you don't really know what it stands for. So if you have an older Arduino board, I typically pick the last one on the list um, and it's typically correct. With the new boards, you don't have to worry about that so much. Programmer. This is the type of programmer for actually writing the code to the AVR that's on the board. You're going to want it to be at AVR ISP. There's lots of different ones here. We don't need to go over that just yet. They're a little more advanced. You can read more about that online. And burn your bootloader. You can actually write custom bootloaders and put that on the chip. So what's a bootloader? Well, when I plug this in, the first thing that happens is power goes to that chip and it runs its bootloader. That basically tells it, what am I? What am I doing? Um, in this case, it automatically starts the USB and it, it looks for the sketch that's been uploaded to it, which is in a whole nother language, but we don't care because we just want to blink an LED or we just want to create our own internet of thing. We don't have to worry too much about the bootloader at this point, but you should know that you can burn a new bootloader. You might need a little extra memory or you might need something very specific or a clock speed to change and you can do that. It's very customizable and Arduino allows you to do that. Then there's the help typically with your, with your computer and the software. Again, don't need to go over that right now. So I know I buzzed through that very quickly, and that's because the reality is 90% of the time you're going to be in your main sketch window, and a lot of those buttons are right there. You don't have to go to a menu to figure these things out. So in this window, upper left-hand corner, you have the verify. You click that, it will verify your code and tell you that it's working properly. If you look on the bottom here, done compiling, it tells you a little bit about the program. Of course, this program has nothing in it, but it still told me it's okay. This one would upload it to the Arduino board after you've selected your board and serial port. We're gonna cover that in the next video. Here's where you create a new sketch. Just click on it, it can start from scratch. And here's open sketch and here's save your sketch. Now remember that serial monitor, it's really the programmer's best friend. I use it all the time. Your serial monitor is right here, the little eye glass, and that'll open up the window and that will give you information that your code tells you to print on your computer screen. There are a few things that you need to set, one of them being the baud rate. We will talk about that in a later video, but you should know where it is. 
Last but not least, there are tabs. You can create a new file or a new sketch. Now tabs is again, a more advanced feature. And what that allows you to do is reference libraries or reference other sketches within an original sketch. For our purposes, for creating this MVB prototype and for this video series, we're not gonna get too much into tabs and, and how to do that. We're just gonna leverage all the amazing stuff that's already in the community and then create our own code. And that's basically it. I know I went over that quite fast, but the reality is you don't need that much detail about this. We are going to be making robots and sensors and light up LEDs before you even know it. It's a few lines of code or a few clicks and an upload and we're done. 